My daughter Chloe has been asking me to build her a dresser for years now, and I'm finally gonna tackle that project. Although she hasn't mentioned anything in months, so I'm guessing she completely gave up on me ever building this project. And it's gonna be a total surprise. She has no idea that I'm building this. <laughs> And as a bonus build, I'm also gonna build her most requested project, the thing that she talks about and asks me about almost every single day, even though it's a small project, I'm guessing she's gonna be more excited about that than she is the dresser. My daughter mostly has pretty decent taste in furniture and design. I mean, she is 20, so it's a work in progress. I think about the stuff that I was into when I was 20, and I definitely didn't have as good a taste as her. But yeah, she has good taste, and I'm pretty sure she'll dig the curved top dresser design that I've come up with. To make that curved top, I'm carving some Baltic birch plywood, and I'll glue these together into two quarter circles. And this always seems like a good idea when I build these projects, but I always end up having issues with this process, as you see here. Kind of as expected, these are not lining up perfectly and that's because I was kind of gluing and nailing and lining these up by hand as I built this up. My solution for this is I'm going to build a jig where I can run this through my table saw and get a nice straight cut on both sides. Plywood isn't exactly a full three quarters of an inch. It's like 23 60 force. I don't know what that is a million meters Jeff. I don't understand why people hate on the American Imperial measuring system. It's perfect. All right, so like I said, I was gonna make a jig. I went ahead and did that off camera. I'm gonna take this curve, get it lined up, screw it into the jig. This is all gonna get veneered and painted and get it exactly where I need it. Make sure everything is nice parallel to this surface. Run it through and I will have two perfectly straight 90 degree surfaces to glue up. I'm gonna use the Festool Domino to assemble these arches. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I previously built my daughter Chloe almost an entire bedroom set, starting with that desk that I made her. Then I made the bed, and last the chair and the bench that I surprised her with this last Christmas. And building stuff for my daughter is one of the most satisfying and rewarding projects I get to make, and it's always an exciting build at first. Now, that said, I never make things easy for myself. And as I work my way through this project, you'll see all the little mistakes that I made and design choices that I had to change on the fly. And I guess I have short-term memory loss because every time I start a new project, I think, oh, this is gonna be an easy one, but it's never easy. There's something I always overlook and I almost always make dumb mistakes. So if you're looking for a master carpenter flawlessly building a perfect project start to finish, this definitely isn't the video for you. But. If you're looking for a mediocre woodworker stumbling his way through a build and occasionally ending up with a decent piece, well, I'm your guy. Right here, I've been working on the miter box that makes up the lower part of the cabinet. And this is a 32 inch wide by 40 inch tall rectangular box with 45 degree joints to mate everything up. Now, all that furniture that I built for Chloe's bedroom has been a mixture of walnut and maple with accents of patterned white epoxy. And I'm carrying that theme over to this dresser so it all feels like one cohesive bedroom set. On this piece, the outer case of the dresser is maple while the doors, the drawer fronts, and the legs are all made out of walnut. So here I'm getting the rough walnut milled up and glued into panels for the drawer fronts and doors. Okay, Jeff is over here putting tape on the bottom of these walnut panels that are gonna be on my uh, drawer fronts. He's being very loud, I apologize for him. But the reason that we have to do this is because this walnut has a ton of knot holes and that's because I made the mistake of buying rustic walnut. We're gonna make them work for the drawer faces. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some of this Total Boat 2 to 1 high performance epoxy, put in some black pigment for that and all the knot holes. Total Boat is a longtime sponsor and support of my channel. They make the best epoxy products in the game and y'all should check out the link that I have below where you can get a discount every time you shop at totalboat.com and not only is it the best epoxy out there it's also delicious to uh, liquid plastic it's a good year <laughs> last night I got another tattoo I know shocking they killed it while we're getting tattooed we were listening to what they refer to as butt rock do you know what butt rock is it's like Nickelback Seven Mary Three the like, Nixons this the rock to you. so like the Nixons are from Oklahoma. Hinder. You remember Hinder? Oh, oh yeah. What did Hinder sing? Lips of an angel? Lips of an angel. Yeah, this. Oh my How does it go? Sing it. I'm so bad at that. Do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> you know who else is from Oklahoma? Hanson. Hanson. And a little known fact, 
Gartholomew Brooks is from uh, Yukon, which is a town in Oklahoma that no one cares about. Is there something interfering with your happiness or something preventing you from achieving your goals? Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human who lives in the world and you're going through a hard time, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. Now, I've had my own struggles dealing with stress and anxiety, and I know the power of therapy and how much it can help. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more accessible and more affordable. And this is an important mission because finding the right therapist can be hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by answering just a few questions, BetterHelp can match you with a professional therapist in as little as a few days. Now, there's a link down in my description. It's betterhelp.com slash johnnybuilds. And clicking that link helps support this channel it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if that helps you. And because finding a therapist is a little bit like dating, if you don't fit with that therapist, which is a common thing that happens in therapy, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without having to stress about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. And again, as someone who's personally struggled, I really know the power of therapy. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Just click that link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash johnnybuilds. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. All right, getting back to the arch to glue up and that glue is dried and I can knock off all those temporary clamping blocks that I used to pull the arch together. I sanded the outside, but the bottom edge wasn't completely flat. So Jeff helped me sand this part flat. Jeff actually helps me out a lot in this video. He's helping me build this piece, and this is because I had a tight deadline to get this project done, while I was also working on another table build that should be dropping here in about a week. So if you haven't already, get subscribed because that's gonna be a killer project. But I did hit a few snags and almost had to scrap that whole build. So you're definitely gonna wanna check that out. But in this video, you're gonna see Jeff helping out a bunch on this build as we divide and conquer to get this project done. This is PSA, or Pressure Sensitive Veneer from Rockler, another longtime sponsor of this channel. And make sure you check out the links that I've got below for all the Rockler products that I use in this video. And as always, thanks for supporting my sponsors, which is the best way to support my channel, and I always appreciate that. So again, this veneer has adhesive on the back that is activated by applying pressure with this roller. And once you apply the pressure, the adhesive bonds. But the nice thing about using PSA veneer is you can pull it back up, move it around if you need to, before you use the roller which is something that you can't do with normal veneer. Back to working on the drawer fronts, I worked on this design for days and originally I wanted to do a floral design, but everything I drew up, I just ended up hating. Then I kind of got rid of the idea of doing a floral design and I switched to this sort of nested half circle design, which I think looks really cool. But unfortunately, when I was carving those on the CNC, all the little thin pieces kept breaking off. So I had to abandon this design as well. Hello darkness, my old friend. So finally I landed on this sort of diamond geometric pattern and this was inspired by a dresser that I saw on Anthropology. Knowing Chloe loves Anthropology, I figured she would really dig this pattern. The process to get to this point was super stressful and quite honestly this whole project was stressful due to all the mistakes that I made and that tight deadline. And while I'm working on the drawer faces, Jeff is working on the face frame for the dresser, which is made from three quarter inch thick maple. And if you think pocket holes don't have a place in fine furniture, well, mostly you'd be right. But for building face frames, nothing is better that I've tried than pocket hole joinery combined with wood glue. So hate on pocket holes all you want, but they're super handy and you're never gonna see them. And then I had to leave town for a very important, uh, we'll say meeting. Hey, hey. So back in the shop, Jeff is working on painting the interior of the arch with this turquoise blue, which I felt would really add a nice pop of color to the inside of the cabinet, but something that wasn't gonna be visible from the outside when everything was closed. He also attached the curved top to the lower cabinet box and had just put on the curved face frame on the top when I came straight from the airport back to the shop after getting in from my trip. I just got back from my, uh, my quick trip. Jeff was kicking ass while I was gone. But what I saw here uh, when I came back, the face frame that I cut for this, uh, because that radius changed, we had to kind of pull it in and cut the bottom off. These don't quite match up. So what I need to do, pull these off. I've already started that process. 
And then I need to cut new radius face frame pieces that are actually wider. So then we can come back and flush trim it to exactly what we need to match the radius perfectly. So I cut those new pieces on the CNC and this time I made them an inch thick so I could flush trim those back after it was attached to the cabinet. And that way I would have a perfect fit to that radius. I'm building the drawers out of half inch Baltic birch plywood and for accuracy, I cut all these on my Avid CNC and was able to assemble those fairly quickly. Now to match the turquoise upper cabinet, I had Jeff paint the drawers turquoise, which again, I think it gives it a really nice extra pop of color, but you're not gonna see this when the dresser is all closed up. So you saw me cut the drawer faces in a previous step, and now I'm cutting all the doors that fit in the archway. But like I told you from the beginning, nothing on this project came easy. All right, I got the doors cut and they look really good, but one problem, they don't fit. What happened was because we kind of had to compress this and cut a little bit off of that arch, the entire geometry changed and that got compounded over that arch. I went ahead and measured out that new radius. I've gone ahead and made new G code. I've already glued up a set of new panels. I had to go get more of that rustic walnut, glue up those panels. And now we can go out on the CNC and cut the new doors and those will fit. And hopefully I won't waste any more money on this project because I keep shit up. So I don't have a lot of experience turning things on a lathe, but the little that I've done, I've really enjoyed. So I thought it would be fun to turn the legs for this dresser, even though I have zero experience turning a set of something that all has to be a uniform size and shape. But I had a vision for what I wanted the legs of this dresser to look like, and the only way to do that was to turn it on a lathe. Overall, I was pretty happy with the way they turned out. Now, I'll totally admit each leg is slightly different from the rest, but if you step back and kind of blur your eyes a little bit, they look pretty darn good and I'll get those attached later. For now, I need to tackle the epoxy inlay fills on the drawer faces and doors. And again, I'm using Total Boat 2 to 1 high performance epoxy and adding some white pigment. Now, I've done enough of these epoxy pours to come to the conclusion that I'm just wasting my time trying to keep everything neat as the epoxy usually spills out all over the place. So now my strategy is to just dump it on and spread it with a spreader to move all the epoxy around. It looks super messy and it Totally is, but the end result actually looks pretty good. And I don't waste time trying to keep my pores nice and clean when it's just gonna be a huge mess anyways. After letting the epoxy cure for a day, I came back to remove all the excess and I started with trying to sand all the epoxy away, but quickly realized this was gonna take a really long time. So then I just ran all those panels through my planer knowing this could potentially chip out the epoxy and I did get a fair amount of chip out and very much do not recommend this technique, but after some sanding, it all looked pretty good and you can't even tell that I had a couple places where it chipped out. While I'm working on making the back panel, Jeff is tackling the center divider for the upper cabinet. And this is just gonna be two pieces of Baltic birch that he painted that same turquoise color. But Jeff cut in some more pocket holes on one side, secured that in place, and just glued the second side to the first. I've got that back panel cut from a sheet of half inch Baltic birch, and this was actually a happy accident stemming from how bad the veneer joint on the upper arch and the lower cabinet looked. It was really gappy and uneven, and this led me to have to come up with a solution to kind of hide this joint. So what I did was I decided to use some three quarter inch wide brass bar that I ordered on McMaster Car and fasten that with some decorative brass screws. So not only is this gonna hide the seam, but I'm also gonna wrap the entire perimeter of the dresser in this brass. And that's what allowed me to use that half inch plywood for the back versus having to wrap it in a panel since that brass is going to cover the exposed plywood edge. This is one of those instances when a mistake like a huge eye store requires some sort of solution and that solution ends up elevating the whole piece. Like I'm kind of annoyed I didn't think to add the brass detail to the original design instead of purely relying on this to hide a mistake. But either way, this dresser is getting cooler the more I screw stuff up. So now I'm in the home stretch on wrapping this dresser and there's a lot of little small steps to finish out that last 10% of the build. I had to cut a piece of maple face frame material to fit the center divider on the upper cabinet. I did this by using a handsaw and cutting this and I got a pretty good fit here.
The doors of the upper cabinet are in sort of a suicide door configuration, meaning they open towards the center. And to attach these, I'm using some full inset Euro style hinges and this Craig hinge jig to install. One of the great things about having a CNC is making templates for drilling holes for door hardware and drawer slides. I was able to quickly mark out and install the drawer slides with even placement. Another template sets the drawer location for the part of the drawer slide that connects to the side of the drawers. And installing drawers isn't difficult per se, but having a template to mark everything out saves a bunch of time. Next, I can add those drawer fronts, and I like to use CA glue to stick the drawer fronts in place and then add screws from the inside of the drawer. I found some really nice drawer pulls that I'll link down below along with everything else that I use in this build, but I got these on Amazon and these might be the nicest drawer pulls Amazon has ever offered. They felt really solid, hefty, and they looked really good in person. So I gotta say, good job, Bezos. Keep making the world a better place. Back to those legs that I turned earlier, I can get those attached using some 3 8 inch all thread and some T-nuts on the underside of the dresser. But first I need to drill out for the all thread and attach those with some four minute epoxy. So I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, but along with the dresser, Chloe has been asking me nonstop, almost every single day, to build her shelves for her room. And the problem is, the reason why I haven't done it is it's such a simple project that it's not gonna make a good YouTube video. And I'm so busy that everything I build has to be a YouTube video as well. So a year ago, I ordered these really beautiful curly maple spalted burl maple super slabs, I don't know, whatever, from Oregon. And I paid a cool thousand bucks for the pair thinking that these are gonna make an awesome table. When they arrived, they were way too small and I didn't really quite know what to do with them. So they just sat there for a year. Chloe had specifically asked for live edge shelves. This was the only set of live edge slabs that I had in the shop that could possibly work. So I decided why not? I'll make some shelves out of thousand dollar slabs. Not really what they were meant for, but I think she's gonna love them. I'm not really gonna make them because Jeff tackled the building the shelves while I was finishing up the dresser. So I guess when Chloe sees these, I'll have to tell her that I still haven't built her shelves yet. I'm also adding a coat of Blacktail Studio N3 Nano Finish to the brass to help protect it from scratches and from tarnishing. Now you've seen me use N3 on tables, but this Nano Finish is great for many applications like you see me doing here. N3 has been a game changer in finishing furniture pieces by adding a nano layer of protection and hardness. And my pieces aren't truly finished unless I've added N3. So I've got a link for you down below so you can check that out for yourself, but this stuff is awesome. All right, the dresser is done and we got it over to the house and set it up in the loft to surprise Chloe. We also installed the shelves in a room above the desk that I built. And this is why I'm revealing the dresser in the loft because the shelves are gonna be like a secondary surprise. Let's go see what she thinks. Don't look, don't look. <laughs> Keep looking down. Okay. Keep looking down. Okay, now I got you. <gasps> what is this? Is this a dresser? It's a dresser. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. You haven't posted anything about this. No, I have to keep it a secret. <laughs> I love it. How long have you been asking for a dresser? I don't know, a long time. A couple years, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, it's so pretty. It matches my bed and my desk and stuff. Yeah, it's meant to be part of the set. What do you want me to build next? Shelves. She's been asking for shelves for... Every day. Not as long as this. You know what though? We should go check your room. Hold on. We should go check your room. Cause maybe, maybe bonus, maybe there was a bonus build. I don't know. You're joking. Well, oh, my bed's made. So I know that, I know that. I know that. I can see it! I can see it! Oh my God. Yeah? Oh, they're perfect. Oh my God, they're exactly what I wanted. Oh my God! Yes! I love you. Thank you, I love you. Thanks. What are you more excited about? You can be honest. The shelves. <laughs> My room is complete.
sweet. So That's the, why I'm so excited. The funny thing is, I didn't even build these. I've had these slabs, but I knew I was gonna do this, but we were trying to get the dresser done. So we showed up today and I'm like, Jeff, this is what I want, make her shelves. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> so I didn't make her shelves, Jeff did. Is yes. that what you've been stressing about? Yes. <laughs> cool. Yes. Oh, I love it. Look how nice these slabs are. They're so pretty and I love these. These are so pretty. Seeing Chloe's reaction and her genuine appreciation makes all those mistakes and the stress of this project totally worth it in the end. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you get subscribed to see what I'm making next. Comment this if you watch to the end.